Yes, this 30-year-old coding book is still relevant. So this is a massive 800-page book that's been on my shelf for, well, almost 30 years. And I have occasionally dipped into it, read quite uh, large chunks of it, but I've never read it cover to cover until now. So what is this book? Well, obviously it's Code Complete by Steve McConnell, and there is actually a second edition of this book available. Now, I haven't read the second edition, I read the first edition. Apparently he updated quite a lot in it, but essentially it's about coding. None of that kind of other stuff that's involved in the whole software development process, the actual act of writing code down to the single line and talking about things like how should you name a routine? How do you structure a routine? Is there a, a good amount of lines of code in a routine? Should you comment? What kind of level of commenting should you do? Steve McConnell did an extensive survey of all the literature, basically really all the literature available at the time he wrote this, which is 1993, back in a time when you could still manage to do that. And so there's a whole bunch of hard data in the book that describes, okay, well, here is a good way of doing this and this is the data that backs it up. Here are the studies that have shown that this is a good way of doing this particular thing. So one question you could ask is how much of this is still useful? I would say about 80% in the first edition. I don't know about the second edition, but in the first edition, probably about 80%. Those things like how to write a routine and commenting, they are just evergreen topics, really. What are the best ways of writing particular control structures like loops and ifs? So what is past its use by date? There's some funny things in here. For example, he has a section on what the ideal IDE would be, which is quite funny to read because there's He's talking about things like code completion, which was very, you know, something that 1993, that wasn't around back then. And, and navigating code bases, all this sort of stuff that we just take for granted now. So it's kind of like, yeah, well, that's, we've got that already. So you don't need to read about that. And then there's uh, things like uh, a section on go-tos, which I don't think anyone ever uses go-tos anymore. One example of the uh, hard data that he has is uh, the error rate by the number of lines changed. So when there's a change to a piece of code and whether that gets tested or not, five lines of code is the place where the least number of errors occur because it's small enough that there aren't likely to be errors in it. And it's just enough lines that people feel that they need to test it. Whereas if you do a single line change, often you don't want to bother testing it because it's like, oh, it's just a single line. And then of course you get the errors because you haven't tested it. And so yes, there are takeaways from this book like, yes, make damn sure that you test code if you've only made a single or two line change. So back to the original question, is this worth reading? Definitely. It's like The Psychology of Computer Programming. That's a fantastic book by Daniel Weinberg. Evergreen content that will be useful in 50 years. You may ask, how did I manage to read an 800 page technical book? It's amazing how much you can read in just 10 minutes. So I try to spend 10 minutes per day reading a technical book. This book took me about six months, which it's a long time, but I have now read this 800 page book and it was worthwhile and it only took 10 minutes a day. So I highly encourage you, if you're interested in this kind of stuff, any sort of technical books, just set yourself a timer 10 minutes a day and you'll actually read through a heck of a lot of stuff. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. Um, it is a bit different from my normal stuff and I will see you in the next video.